I've given you the recording access as well. So, let's start. Okay. Uh, so, Chitar, in case if you don't give the recording access for those um, down the line after the, some three third of the fifth session or somewhere, uh, will you be uh, giving us the step by step uh, kind of thing? Uh, documents? Yes, 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 definitely. I would be giving you the step by step screenshot documents uh, and also the PPTs and also the SAP document, also, as I told you before, everything I would be giving you. Where, whatever I am telling you would be documented over there. No, no, step by step, if, it, if, it, if the step by step is from your server or whatever you do, know, it will be good for us actually. It will be more informative to us. Sorry, I didn't got you. No, no. If at all, if, if at all you, you are able to give us a step by step uh, kind of document from the real time, you know, mm -hmm. then it will be good for us. That's what I'm thinking. Yeah, yeah, real time environment only from the whatever I have created, you know, the step by step document while implementing projects for the customer. Okay. Uh, that particular document only I would be sharing with you. Okay, okay. Okay. No. okay, then. So let's start for the day. So, till yesterday, we discussed about the deployment approaches. Okay, so there are three deployment approaches. Wherein either the I mean where you can play around with the IWBP, IWFND, and GW Core. But for Fury, for the standard Fury applications, the uh, what we say, I mean the IWBP should always be present onto the backend, and IWFND or and the GW Core should be present onto your front end network gateway. So apart from the foundation components, you know, apart from the foundation components, there are some more components that would be required. So as of now, whatever we have discussed, you know, these were the foundation components that would be required. That is the GW core, IWFND, uh, IWBP. These are the foundation components. Apart from the foundation component, as, as we have discussed before, for every Fiori application, for every Fiori application, there would be a product specific UI add-on and there would be a product specific O data add-on. So you need to install or you need to, you know, uh, have that particular stuff as well on your system. So for every Fiori application, apart from the foundation component that we have discussed, definitely that would be required for all the Fiori application to build the environment. But apart from that, for every Fiori application, two more add-ons would be required. One would be the uh, product-specific UI add-on, and other would be the product-specific O data add-on. So let's discuss where this add-on would be present and how we would come to know for, uh, for the different types of application, what exactly is the add-on required and what is the dependency of that add-on on the different you know, environmental setup. So let's drill down into that particular thing into a bit more detail. So just a moment. <clears throat> Jigar, quick question. Yeah. Hey, um, yes, Viranya. Uh, you know, if I'm recording this, uh, where exactly will this be saved? Once you, once the meeting is ended, then it will ask you that the Zoom is trying to convert the recording. So it will okay. take some time, you know, whatever uh, uh, is the uh, duration of the session according to that will take some time. And then it would be stored inside the C drive, inside the documents folder. Uh, there would be a folder created called as Zoom. Okay. Automatically, it will get created. And inside the Zoom folder, the recording with the today's date would be stored. Okay. 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 So, yeah. So, let's move ahead. So, first, let's discuss what exactly do you need to install onto your uh, backend. So apart from the foundation components, uh, that is the IWBP, uh, you would require an SRA, that is the functional component, that is the O data component to be precise, that needs to be installed onto your backend. So for let's say if you want to install, I mean if you want to configure a proof purchase order standard for your application, then definitely IWBP onto your backend should be there. But apart from that, onto the backend server, you need to install an SRA, which which would be required for that particular Fiori application. 
we'll see later on in today in the today session only what exactly is the sra that would be required for a poe application and how would you come to know what are the different sra or what are the different components that would be required for the poe application but as of now just remember that apart from the iwbp component that is the foundation component onto the back end an sra which is nothing but an o data integration add on which needs to be present for every fiori application on to your back end on to the front end now on to the front end definitely the gwfnd iwfnd uh, component should be there uh, that uh, these are i mean either the gwfnd or iwfnd and gw code these components should be there but apart from that o data integration oh, sorry ui product specific ui add on should also be present on to your netweaver gateway so for every fiori application there will be a ui add on apart from the foundation component that should be present on to your netweaver gateway so now what happens you know most of the times also this happens that let's say uh, there are five fiori application that you want to implement so on to the back end you will implement five sras you know you need to install five sras which would be required for all the fiori application and also the front end also you will have to install five ui add on Uh, which would be having the source code or the ui code for that five particular fiori application but nowadays what sap is doing is they are you know they are uh, coming up with a package so it might happen that one ui add on which actually serve the purpose for you for five or 10 fiori application so rather than installing 10 separate installations onto your front end server you can just you know there might be some scenario wherein you can just install one and that one ui add on will take care for the source code of five or for 10 fiori applications so it can happen like that but usually as of now most of the time what happen for every fiori application one ui add on and one back end add on that is the o data add on needs to be there well, um uh, is it my problem or uh, uh, is the voice clear for others from any issue is there any problem yeah. no problem clear yeah. clear only okay. for me also it's clear okay niranjan uh, can you just check your Maybe network you speed can try yeah. connecting i'll check it no issues carry on please okay is it is it uh, negotiable or is it very worse i mean how is it can you at least hear it i can but it's a there's a lag i think it's because of my internet connection i don't know uh, but yeah please carry on uh, just in case if there's something wrong i'll get the recording but for now yeah please carry on but niranjan's okay. voice is very clear for me there is no lag at all okay probably my my internet problem i mean it might be some problem from his from his side not an okay. issue so if any point you're not able to understand just let me know if you're not able to hear if it's worse now i can repeat that particular statement not an issue Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, let me take you to the system now. So now what happened? Okay. One important thing. Okay. So now the system that we are going to have for practice is going to be an embedded system. Okay. So one single system wherein the backend components also would be there, and also the frontend also components would be there. So basically, this type of architecture is what we are going to have for the uh for the practice but then when we are going to implement and when we are going to do the configurations later on we'll definitely do the practical on top of this for for the embedded deployment but parallelly we'll also discuss if there might be any changes in case of the central of deployment approach if you are you know if uh, that is what we are implementing for the customer so we'll discuss both of that but practically what we are going to implement is going to be on to the embedded system So on to the embedded system, what will happen? You know, the IWBP, SRAs, IWFND, or GWFND UI component, everything would be present onto a single system. But if it's a central app deployment, then what will happen? Onto your backend server, you will have the foundation components uh, and the UI component, and onto the uh, sorry, onto the backend server, you will have the IWBP component and the SRA, and onto the frontend component, you will have the Uh, related GW core and IWFND component and the UI component. So let me take you to the system. You will get the system access by tomorrow, most probably. You will get it by tomorrow for sure. So let me just take you to the system and let's see how we can check it out. What are the different SRAs and you know what are the different UI components that are already there on the system? 
So let me just uh, open it up. Okay, so I'm on to my embedded system. So over here, if you go into the system tab and you see the status, so you will come to know that it's an EHP 7 of SAP ERP system. And on top of that, you know, uh, even the GW FND component is installed. So it's having the version 7.4. So I do not have to install the separate, you know, GW core and IWBP and IW FND. Apart from that, I will just install one SAP GW FND component. That's it. It's a foundation component which will take care of all the you know sub packages inside this. That is the IWBP, IW FND, and GW core, whatever is required. So GW FND is present. So this component will actually make this backend system start acting as an O data. Uh, sorry, uh, start acting as a NetWeaver gateway as well. So now my backend, since it's an embedded deployment uh, scenario, so now my backend will also act as an uh, NetWeaver gateway. Over. So over here, we should be able to see both that the SRA component for every Fiori application, whatever uh, is there, whatever we want to configure, and also the UI component. So if we see, if we just go down uh, a bit, we'll see some of the SRA which are already installed. Okay, so you can see, you know, there are many SRAs for different different applications. So you can see SRA 01 for approving purchase contract application, SRA 02 for time recording O data integration component. So for, you can see that this SRA is related to O data integration component for every Fiori application, there would be an SRA. Similarly, there is the UI component you can see. So UI for ERP central application, UI for retail operation store, UI for travel applications. So there is this UI component also present over there. Not only the UI component, but also the corresponding SP level is also taken care about. So over here, you can just check it out. You know, what, what are the, Configure what are the components that are present over here? So once the components are present, then you can go ahead and then you can do the configuration and then you can bring the, st the standard Fiori application in picture onto the SAP Fiori launch file. So now the most important question that might be popping up into your mind that how will you come to know uh, how you will be setting up the architecture uh, before you know I mean before you go ahead and configure the Fiori application because Every Fiori application might have a different UI add-on requirement, might have a different uh, OData integration add-on requirement, or might have a different, you know, the uh, backend enhancement pack requirement. So some application might work on EHP 7 of your backend, or some application might work on only EHP 5, or some application might work on only the NetWeaver gateway version 7.40 and above. Some application might be able to work, you know, on the lower version as well, that is the 7.31. So what all the... I mean, what exactly is the place where you can get all this information? So basically, there are two important places where you can get all of these information in a very crisp and a very efficient way. So let's check out that particular places. So first, let's check it out. The let me just open my Google Chrome. Okay, so the first place is the help.sap.com slash Fiori. So when you type in this, you know, you will get this particular page and over here there is one uh, tab that you will, I mean, one uh, link that you will click on that is the SAP Fiori apps. So when you click on SAP Fiori apps and when you click on this uh, app catalog, so whatever Fiori applications that are present would be listed down over here. You know, complete all the Fiori applications and the corresponding uh, backend and the frontend versions. So we'll just, let's say if we want to implement approved purchase order. Okay, so I can just go over here, click on this particular link, approve purchase order and the corresponding information for that. So you can just see that this is a transactional app and you can just see some of the features, what are the features of this particular application, what you would be able to achieve with the help of this particular Fiori application. 
and this is the system landscape requirement so you can see that the backend ERP 6.0 would be required with SPS 15 or higher so any of this one requirement should be satisfied by your backend product that is either this announcement pack or ERP whatever uh, at least one of these should be satisfied uh, by your uh, backend uh, before you go ahead with the implementation of this particular product well, for this particular field yeah apart from that if you just see in the app implementation so there are three important sections apart from this apart from the system landscape requirement that is the app implementation so if you click on the app implementation for this particular approved purchase order you will get some more information that is you know the backend and the frontend add-on that you have to install so you can see that this is the backend add-on that you will have to install onto the backend uh, onto your backend server uh, so this is the name of the add-on GVAPP 0 to 600 and this is the support package level which you need to be which needs to be maintained onto your pack similarly onto your front end this is the front end component that you will inst have to install with the corresponding uh, support package level not only that but you know uh, also some there are there are some nodes which you will have to implement so over here you will get the information about the nodes as well so you can see for this particular application apart from the back end and the front end component some nodes also needs to be installed so you can just click on this particular part and you will uh, see some of the nodes that needs to be installed by the basis consultant for the application to work uh, smoothly so let, let me just open one of the nodes for you so ask for the s user id and password so let me just enter the S user ID and password. Okay, so you can see some of the nodes over here. So let's say if you are implementing UI X01 EAP 100 and you know the SP08 version if you are using of this particular front end component, then you will have to install this particular node as well because there is some issue with the, uh, with the uh, you can see the description over here. So there is some issue. So sorry. If you are implementing the SP07 version, then you have to install this particular node. But in the SP08, you, if you are going for the SP08, then you do not have to you know, implement this particular node because this particular node is automatically taken care by the SP08. So if you see over here, the front end, the available support package level as of now onto the marketplace is 7. Okay, So it is 7, so definitely you will have to implement the following node as well. But in the SP08, which is which is which would be released very soon by the uh, in the in the service marketplace, then then at that point of time you're going to have to implement this node. But on top of SP07 version, this is the node that you will have to install. Apart from this, uh, this is for the front end component. For the back end component, also you can see if you are implementing the SP09 of the back end component, then these are the three nodes that you will have to configure. That you have to install basically not configure but you the guy will have to apply this patch or this notes onto the backend systems but on the sp10 in the sp10 version this particular node will be automatically taken care of but uh, as of now only sp09 is available in the marketplace but in the sp10 this particular node will be taken care of but in the S as of sp9 these are the three nodes that you will have to apply so so this is one of the places where you can get you know the complete information uh, re related to the setup of the uh, application. That is the Jigar, infrastructure requirement. Jigar, I have a question. Um, yeah. So what is the what is the support pack that's on the system, on the test system that we have? Uh, on this test system, the support packs along with the SP nodes, everything are kept installed by the basis people. So what we are going to focus more on is the configuration part. So as of now, we are just studying the architecture. I guess on the test system for this particular. When can we take that, basically? I mean, the same way, uh, the status where I showed you just right now. Okay. If you click on the status, if I just take you back again, let me just take you back. So if you see over here, you know, in the status. Right. 
Okay, so in the yeah, that's good. But where is where does it show that it is? Um, yes, I'll show you. So over here, the SP level. Am I getting it? Yeah, I get I get that. Let's look at that one example that the approve uh, apps UI SP level. So uh, X zero one EAP hundred. So 06, 006 is the version that is applied. Right. So so it so this one doesn't have that um, whatever note that we are talking, right? Or or the basis they installed it on this system as well. Yes, the notes would be installed because this particular application, approved purchase order application, is working perfectly fine. Okay. So that means that the notes is applied. The notes are applied. So what might happen, you know, 006 when there might be a 006 SP level version. So there might be some different nodes right. that might have been applied by them and then that node might have been uh, taken care of the SP07. But now in the SP07 also there are some more nodes available which would be, uh, which needs to be applied and which would be taken care of the SP08. So as and when you know the customer whenever they come up with some problem, so rather than straight away releasing a note, I mean rather than straight away releasing an SP level, they come up with a note. And when then the note word, when the note number in, increased by uh, to let's say 20 or 25, whatever might be the number of notes that uh, increases, then they come up with an SP level and then they release that SP level on the service marketplace and then you can just upgrade your current SP level to the latest SP level. So this is how basically happens. So rather than just installing the SP level, the basis guy will also have to take care, you know, to apply the corresponding notes and all that information the main focus point is the, all that information you can get on this help.sap.com slash fury. Uh, where is, is this ERP 6.0 or ERP? What is the ERP system version? This one. For this particular Fiori application, yeah. you can see. So these are the, you know, uh, the different version that should be there. So any one of this should be satisfied. Any one of this should be satisfied. Okay. okay. The one that we have the test system is that ERP 6.0. That is uh, EHP 7. This is this. Okay. It's EHP 7. The latest okay. one we are having. 6.0 EHP 7. Announcement pack 7. Okay. Yeah, thanks. And you are saying the name of the app as GB app underscore 002, right? But uh, you no, know. It's not name of the app. It's name of the component. Right, right. And then the name of the component is GBI, but we when we look at the technical components in the backend system, it should be SRA, right? Why is it GBI, the technical no, name? No, no, no. It can be SRA. For most of the application, it is SRA, but this is a special application. For this, it's a GB app. So if I show you, there would be a GB app as well installed. So it's a name. It's, uh, it's basically a name. So over here, most of the time there is SRA, but this is a specific thing over here. They have given the name as GB app. So if I just show you into the G, so you can see GB app. Okay. So just the name. So some of the applications have uh, GB app over here. You can see GB HCM. So these might, these are, might be some other data components, which is starting from GB, but most of them starts with SRA, but some of them might also have a name as GB, you know, starting with GB as well. So it can happen. So whatever is the name that is given by SAP, you will have to install that particular component, search that particular component service marketplace and just install it. You got the point? Yes. Okay. So this is one of the place where you can get, you know, uh, good information about any of the Fiori application. Not only that later on, now this is you know, something which uh, the Fiori consultant would be looking into it and then relaying to the Fiori, to the basis consultant, that this is the Fiori application that the customer is wanting and these are the, some of the components that needs to be installed. So you will just forward it to the basis consultant, they will install it and once they do it, once they do that work for you, then you will use the other information that is the configuration information which is you know maintained over here in order to configure the Fiori application. So first you will strategize the architecture, so what all components, where all components would be required what is the architecture that needs to be followed? That is, where should be the foundation component should be present? Either it should be an embedded one or it should be a, a central deployment. What all that strategizing would be done by you. 
then the corresponding component names you know whatever needs to be installed with the corresponding sp level and the uh, the support uh, and the notes needs to be related to the business consultant they will install it and then once they do that work then again the control comes back to you when you will have to do the configurations so later on when we will restart doing the configuration we will again use this part of information over here in order to do the configuration of this particular theory application so as of now we will not touch this we will not touch the configuration related information whatever is maintained over here we will look into that afterwards but uh, the system related information or you can say the landscape related information for this particular theory application is definitely one thing which is properly maintained over here the other place and which is a very new place that sap is specifically developed for the fiori applications you know uh, just uh, four five months back they have come up with this library which is called as the fiori apps library so when you open this particular fiori apps library which is purely meant for the fiori application uh, this is another very good place where you can get good, good information of all the fiori application in a very uh, uh, good way i mean in a very crisp way very properly structured way so let's see this particular uh, reference library as well where you can get very good information on all the fiori applications so you can you know search the application uh, by the different filters over here by lines of business by industry by roles you know whatever the bio back end product so as of now let's click on by all apps so it will show me all the apps which are available as of now inside the fiori package I guess it's somewhere around 577. The last time I checked. Let's see what is the number of application now. So it's the same 577. So let's say if I want to implement, you know, approved purchase order. So I'll just search that. So approved purchase order. I'll just click on that. And then you are able to see, you know, the line of business sourcing and procurement. The required backend would be SAP ERP. It's a transactional type of application, and database can be anything. Some of the product features is maintained over here. Like what are the key features? Some screenshot of the application. All of that is documented over here. Apart from that, there is one more tab called as the implementation information. Now the implementation information is categorized into four parts: installation, configuration, extensibility, and support. So the, the first part, you know, before uh, going ahead and configuring the application, where we would be using the configuration tab. As of now, we would be interested on the setting up the infrastructure. So we'll go on to the installation tab. So in the installation tab, you will see, you know, the uh, prerequisite for installation, the software component that you have to install, the prerequisite for installation. That is, it should uh, the front end, the gateway version should be 7.40 with SPS 08 or it should have the version SAP Gateway 2.0 SPS09. Similarly, onto the back end, this is the software component that you have to install, and uh, this is the prerequisite that you will have to take care of. Any one of that, any one of that should be taken care of. And these are some of the nodes which should be uh, applied to your Fiori applications. So now there is uh, one more thing, a product version. We'll check out that afterwards. So what is this? This is a very important thing. Basically, this is a search term which you will use for downloading, or which the basis guys, uh, which they will use for downloading that particular soft, you know, the product add-on. So this is not uh, the way uh, you will download the product add-on. You will just search this particular term in the service marketplace, and then you know, uh, inside this particular search term, there might be many. Uh, Product add-ons, and from there you will just select your particular product add-ons. Seem to that particular thing, but uh, this is one of the places that you can get some crisp information. Later on, you know, when we would be doing the configuration part, uh, we would be using all this information maintained over here. A lot of information are uh, present over here. We will be using that, and then once the configuration is done, then we will be doing the extensions. You know, uh, enhancing the standard application. The information of that is also maintained over here. So we will be using this particular thing as well for enhancing the standard theory application. But let's say you know you have some issue with this particular product and you want to raise a ticket. So the support ID that you're going to use is this because when the basis guy they raise the ticket, they have to raise it against a customer. Uh, I mean they have to raise it against a, 
uh, a support space, you know, a support ID. This is the ID that you are going to uh, use in order to raise any concern regarding to this particular application. So they can raise it against this particular component ID inside the service marketplace. Any questions onto this? Ramani, Isha, Niranjan? No yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So then let's let's uh, go back to our presentation. Okay, so which tools to use? Now, uh, this is for sure that the basis consultants for every Fiori application, they will have to install some, you know, Fiori add-ons, or it can be onto the front end, or it can only be onto the back end. They will have to install some uh, some add-ons. So now, which tools the base guy should be using, which is recommended by ACP? So this component definitely would be downloaded from the service marketplace, or downloaded from the service marketplace, and uh, then. Uh, Applying it to your system, you can do it in multiple ways. But uh, so one of the ways using the solution manager, uh, and the other thing is the software update manager. So the reason for I mean why we are covering this particular thing or the tools which should be taken care of for, by the basis consultant for by while implementing the Fiori add-ons is that uh, the reason for this is uh, we are in a very highly not necessary volatile but fast moving area and Fiori is evolving day in and day out. There are a lot of changes, there are a lot of support packs, there are a lot of patches coming in day in and day out. And in that context, it is important to have a set of tools which ensure that you are doing the right thing at the right time. Okay, just just a moment, I'm getting a call, just a moment guys. Okay, so now Fiori is evolving, and there are a lot of changes that happens day in and day out. And in that context, you know, there are a lot of SP levels, nodes coming in day in and day out. And in that context, it is important to have a set of tools for the basis people, which, so that they can ensure that they are doing the right thing at the right time. And this is where you know this uh, software update manager, this toolkit, the, the this comes in very handy. So the software update manager, for example, it basically facilitates NetViewer based application system updates, enhancement package updates, and installation of support packages, for example, in a single harmonized UI. So whatever might be the system, you know, let me, let's say uh, onto the development server, onto the NetViewer gateway, you want to upgrade a particular Fiori add-on, you want to apply a particular node to a Fiori add-on. So using a single harmonized UI, you can you know, not only do the development server, but you can connect this particular software update manager or your solution manager to multiple systems and using a single, uh, uh, what we say, harmonized UI. Simultaneously, you can do the upgrade or you can do the uh, enhancements on top of any of your uh, systems, on top of any of your systems. So this software update manager is shipped as a part of a tool set as a part of a solution manager, so on top of solution manager, you have to install, you know, you have to add this add-on of software update manager. So this is specifically very heavily used by the basis consultant in case of Fiori, which is very also recommended by SAP in order to uh, take care of the uh, enhancement which comes in day in and day out by the SAP for the Fiori application. So you know, whenever there is any enhancement that is uh, coming up, uh, that has come up, any enhancement or any uh, node that has come up for that particular add-on which you have installed, so a notification will uh, pop up inside this harmonized UI of software update manager, which makes it you know very very uh, good to be used. 
Okay. So this is uh, the recommended tool by SAP to uh, implement the uh, standard theory application for the to I mean to install the standard theory add-ons onto the theory infrastructure. So this is something the basic consultant uh, should be using in order to implement the theory theory add-ons on these uh, SAP systems. So Niranjan has asked one question: Do we use Java stack in theory landscape? No, Java stack is by default not required because NetWeaver gateway is an ABAP stack, and on top of ABAP stack, you would be installing the uh, the UI the sorry the gateway add-on or the GW4 add-on. The Java stack is not required. It's purely a BAP stack. Okay. So let's move ahead. So from the service marketplace, you would be getting the add-ons. Okay. So how you will you would search the add-ons, or how the basis consultants would be searching the add-ons on the service marketplace. Uh, let me just show you that even though we would not be doing that, but just to give you an idea from the service marketplace of this thing, you know, would be taken care of. Let me just open the service marketplace. I'm opening the service marketplace. Over here in the software downloads, installation and upgrades. The search term would be whenever you know so you will not just be forwarding this particular information to the basis consultant that is the UI add-on or the o, o, the, the o data add-on that you need to install but apart from that you will also forward them this information that is uh, the product version because this is the search term that they would be using in order to download the add-ons okay just by searching this they will not be get they, they will not get the corresponding uh, uh, add-ons. So this is something that you will have to enter to get the add-ons. The so Fury ERP application X1 0. X1 1.0. Let me just copy this. Let me just enter my service marketplace credentials. So this search term, I will just put it over here, and if I click on search, yes, You can see Fury ERP application X1.10, and if you just see inside this, So 
over here you will see many add-ons you know which might be uh, covered itself this single bucket so if you if you see our add-ons we will be requiring this uix01 eap100 this is what the basis consumption will store and the gbap002600 this is how you know just by giving the uh, the add-on name will not help actually along with the add-on name you also have to give the product version name inside this product version you know all the add-on not only the ui but also the whole data add-on would be uh, present inside this so then you know once they click in the product what they type in the product version name then so that they can just drill down for the corresponding required ui and whole data add-on so it's not so whatever you know that is uh, specified over here in the pure app reference library is very important the product version the software component version is very important for uh, 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 installation and this is the minimum support package stack 06 which would be required for both of these components uh, on your on your your lines okay so this is one of the place you know where you can get very good information which is just recently released by sap specifically for purely applications keeping into mind the purely applications and the uh, i mean the fast moving uh, things that are happening in the purely world so keeping into mind they have developed this new repository wherein the uh, wherein the things keeps on updating uh, by sap depending upon the updates that are happening in the different purely application so in this report to this particular place and you can get all the crisp information so in we are going we are later on when we are we will be using this you know both of this uh, places that is the helpdesk.com and the purely app level library we will be comparing both of them you know later on there is the configuration for configuration will require this for extensibility we will be requiring both of this places and we'll see what are uh, how uh, what are the basic differences between both of this uh, uh, information bases uh, which is provided by sap definitely uh, this is the new space which is sap has developed specifically for the purely customers this is something which is uh, newly released by sap so coming back to our ppts this is what i have also mentioned in over here you know the urls help.sap.com where you can get some information in type of uh, back end server configuration so you will have to install the sras on your back end the deployment you can use solution manager the software update manager and solution manager then the installation you will have to use this product version name in order to download the component from the service marketplace so i just you know it is shown you over here that for transactional application the ui application that collected under this particular thing similarly for fact sheet there might be this you know again this all information would be documented inside the app reference library or the help.sap.com for every fiori application you cannot remember this for every fiori application you know there there would be a product version you can just uh, find out the product version forward to your business guys so from there they can download it to the corresponding uh, components So that's it for the day, guys. So any questions up till now? Isha, Ramani, or Niranjan? Do we have class tomorrow? Sorry? Do we have class tomorrow? Yeah, tomorrow we'll have class at same time. Uh, this week we'll just have on Saturday and not on Sunday, and we'll just have a one hour because I have some other commitments. from next week on weekend we can just bucket up a bit more that is 2 to 3 hours and we can complete it as fast as possible okay yeah. <clears throat> okay yeah okay guys uh, any more concerns and jigger yeah. uh, please send the video as well you know because of my internet connection maybe i would have lost something so if you could please share if you record we have recorded it okay i will share it with you. Uh, yeah, I guess even yeah. Uh, I, I need the, the video covering of the first day, first session. I have I have mailed you. Please check right now. I have mailed you before the session only. I have mailed. Okay. 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 Then, guys, let's meet tomorrow same time. Bye. Bye. Good night. Good night. Good night.